Traders, uh, thank you for joining me as traders do stay late. And I just want to thank again everybody for being here with us as we go. I'm going to pop out the chat right now and just get this party started uh, as we go. Thank you so much. There is the board uh, up there for today. And what a wild day it was. Wow. Whatever hair I have. Uh, was less because I was pulling it out all morning as we battled Amazon. We battled that market move to the downside. It's a good thing we turned our little uh, stuffed animal there into a bear early. Then it got bullish midday and then a little fade near the end of the day to see where we go from there. But let's just do a quick little look. I mean, there's a lot of you that are staying late with me and I definitely, definitely appreciate all of that. So let's go over to the board right now and just have a quick little look to see who is here with us right now. Yo, SF, what's going on, my guy? What's up to Jacob there? Tom's trades are here. I hope Tom, today, you had some good trades. Uh, what's up to B. Davis, Mr. Baron Davis? Yo, what's up? He says, you're. Is that what the young guys are saying now? You're. What's up? What's up, comment? What's up to Ian Date? Thanks, Ramin. What's up to Ian David right there? What up to success is inevitable. Look, if you work hard, success is inevitable. No matter what you do, I actually talk, my 11-year-old tells me, he goes, Dad, I need to figure out what I want to do in high school and university. I say, no, you do not, my friend. You just need to, my son, you just need to do something that you love, have passion about. It doesn't matter what you do, whether or not it's day trading, whether or not it's hosting a YouTube channel, whether or not it's, um, working on cars, cleaning hotels, whatever the hell you're doing, make sure you're having a good time doing it. And the end of the day, it's all about your family. So a shout out to everybody there. What's up to Miss A? Hey, Miss A, today was nuts. You are 100% right about that. You're, what's up, Wall Street? He's here as, as well. Kathy's here. Jersey Stranger, what's up to Jersey? Next time in Jersey, don't be a stranger. Let's get together. Yo, what's up, Steve? Ottawa is wonderful. I've been to Ottawa. I've been to Ottawa. I like it. I like it. Ottawa's I. Ottawa's I. I'm not going to say anything bad about Ottawa. It is wonderful. The, the country of Canada is very wonderful. What's up to a C freight here as well? What's up to CC? What's up to Ryan, Jacob? Uh, everybody is up in the building. Yo, the juice. We're loose right now. So let's go. As you can see, it don't matter if we've been on the air for five and a half hours. The energy is still here, baby. As long as we've got our water. Mm -hmm. Ramin, a little bit. Oh, there she goes. She's got it uh, going on right now. Okay, let's go quickly, man. It's called the Market Recap Show for a reason, not just a shout-out show. But we'll do some more roll calls at the end, as you can see. Hey, how was that Keenan Allen anytime touchdown for you yesterday? But the problem was the under. The under was hot, not the over. I thought the over was going to hit. Okay, so what was hot today? Look, I feel like this KRE, honestly... Okay, this is a one-minute chart. I was going to say that's not what it looks like. It looks much better on the daily. Definitely finding itself a bottom there at 40 bucks. So congratulations, anybody on the KRE, but let's wait until some more regional banks come through. Wells Fargo was absolutely hot fire. Um, you know, they're, they're a member of this regional banking ETF. So be careful with KRE. But again, we're waiting. I keep saying this every day. When does Western Alliance trade? I actually want to know. Here, let's call this up. KRE weightings, right? Let's just find out what exactly is the biggest weight here. We'll go to ETF.com. Please do not uh, leave me stranded on here. Uh, uh, and again, sign in. Oops, no, we don't need to do that. Uh, holdings, here we go. Let's see what the largest holdings are in the KRE. Okay, M&T Bank. So let's just, I just want to see sort of also when do these, some of these guys report. So uh, MTB, right? MTB right now. Uh, October 18th, so right now, uh, coming in the next couple of days, Zion's Bank, okay. So I, here I am looking up Western Alliance, but as you can see, most of the holdings in these banks are, are in this ETF is about the same, you know? So again, I thought Wells Fargo was a little bit bigger in this one, obviously it's not. As here we go, all about 3%. And these are gonna change again based on the performance of these banks, so. Um, Zion Bank again coming through, so there's what's holding up the KRE right now. Uh, what is Zion looking like right here on a, on a chart? Yeah, so we had these nice moves down. Obviously, we talked about what happened in the spring. We all know all about that. I want to make sure that everybody hits the like and the subscribe. The record for the show is 400 uh, on that. So let me see how many we have right now. 160 with over 2,000 watching. Hey, just hit the like and the subscribe.
If we can do that right now, we can get to four bills uh, and then have some more viewers. So I want to thank everybody for being with me on this one. Wow, postmark at the 18th. What day? Today's the 17th, right? Okay, so there's a lot of action coming in the KRE in the next couple days, looking for net interest loans. But again, the regional banks are going to have a little bit different issues and different situations than the big guys that are reported. The one that I'm most excited for, Morgan Stanley, coming tomorrow. But look at this, man. Look at this $40 level. What's the short float looking like on Zion? 9.5%? Okay, watch out for this $40 level uh, as well. Wow, 100 likes right away out the jump right there. Thank you so much. Now up to 250 Keep hitting it. Keep hitting it. Let's go uh, right now. Okay. Retail, super hot. Amazon, you can go directly to hell, uh, but the XRT goes upside. I, I own Amazon shares. We'll talk about that. That was the largest hit for me today, although we did seek some revenge. Not revenge trading. Amazon fell back into VWAP at the end of the day, and we can quickly look at that. We actually had a very, very nice Amazon long. Let me show you this to you uh, on our chart right here. Here's the nice long that all of you just saw me trade right now live that was that was in and out there was absolutely nothing there here's the long there's the long that was just to, to clear my positions because when we come back on at two o'clock I need to take a position to order for you guys to see my current positions this is why Amazon can go directly to hell and, and it's because well again I need to log back into Twitter but we had Amazon written down as 129 um, for a level that we liked uh, there today. Look at this level of 129. Bounced off there on the 10th, the 11th, bounced off again on the 12th and the 13th, and then bounced off there again this morning. Embarrassing that my largest stock to the red negative stock today was Amazon. Why? Because we were long right there. We took some out. We got stopped out when it broke. Let me see if I can show you. We got stopped out when it broke right there, that red tick, like right, right away, 128.94, out, boom. Right then I was like, ah, okay, maybe if this market wants to tank the rest of the day, then 129, not only is it a level of concern on the long, but it should maybe be resistance then on the way back up. But no, it was not. We did good by getting out there at 129.60, but then Sean, honestly, what are you doing shorting there and there and there and there and there and there and all the way up? And it just, it was paper cuts, but when you're trading with size, those cuts uh, do matter a little bit. And uh, so it was a red stock for me today. So where's the fail? Again, you know, humble a little bit anyway, trying to be slapping a fail right there on that trade. You can't always talk about your best trades without obviously talking about your worst ones. And that's why this is all about real traders. It's why we're doing the show right now. Uh, you know, the emotion that I'm giving on, on the show, you can see right now, I do have, you know, much ability to just relax and calm down. It's just that when stocks are moving and they're moving in your favor and sometimes against you as well, you know, emotions do run wild. And that's one thing that as a trader, you need to keep those emotions in check. We actually have on our, uh, follow me at Trader TV, Sean, that's what we need to have on the bottom. I got to put that on the board. We need to have like my thing. How come when we have guests on, it's like Brian Shannon, this is his, this is his, uh, you know, handle and stuff like that. We don't have it at Trader TV, Sean on both Instagram and on X, both verified. Oh no, on my Instagram, I don't, I think Instagram wants too much money to verify your account. I think I'm going to double check that as well, but go over to that. Anyways, let's move on uh, on all that. But the retail ETF, a nice move today. You know what's a big holding that we realized in the retail ETF is actually Carvana. I, I look, this is not going to be a valuation play. When your EPS is negative, you don't really deserve to be up where you are here on Carvana. That doesn't mean that negative EPS names will always have to have you know, lower price value on their stocks. That's not it at all. Amazon was running bad for a while as well, for a while, for decades, right, before eventually turning a profit. Same thing can be said for Tesla as well. There are companies that can run negative EPSs. I, for me, Carvana, vending machine, cars, we don't have them here in Canada. Some reports that I read about these guys, obviously a nice little inflated uh, move to the upside there. $55, pretty key for Carvana. You've now fallen below some of this support. I would be worried about the Carvana long, but if you're not, then I'm not a shareholder. So you guys can see what's going on with that. OIH, oil, oil sector today, nicely done up to the upside. Again, I did have some notes today. Um, Adara created some notes for me because we, I'd asked her and very kindly uh, she had done that. Um, what was it about oil? Though there was actually nothing about oil today, but there had to have been. Tomorrow we do get... What day is today? Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll get the oil inventories at 10.30. So we'll see what's going on with those guys. XLE, 
thankfully, hallelujah. And I hate that it's based on, again, I don't know if it is based, I mean, some of it has to be based on what's been happening in the Middle East and we do not want to celebrate some, you know, it's not about that. I'm just happy that because we didn't get out of a lot of our XLE up here and then when it went back down to the 200 period, look what kind of a buy that is. I'm not super pleased that we get a bump up because of the Middle Eastern crisis and there was more action there today and it just breaks my heart that this is what's happening. But unfortunately, this is what the world is. And if we're going to talk about trading, then oil continues to make a little bit of a move up here as the XLE spider for energy select getting back up to the upside. And there's USO again. Uh, this is just the United States oil fund. This will more follow the price of oil. So oil still not back to peak high, but we do get a nice uh, move back up to 79 off of a dip down into 73. So I filled up my tank the other day. So it's been pretty good uh, for that. You could see here gold kind of just ho-humming itself back up to the 200. But that's been a nice move. The last couple of days, again, with economic uncertainty in this world, uh, maybe it's not economic, but it's just you know world uncertainty. Uh, you, I could see a strike for gold coming into play one more time again as people looking to take money out. You could see it's the um, Israeli shekel getting devalued as they switch over to US dollars as well. Um, the flight to currencies, we saw the Canadian dollar get hit today against USD. USD today. Although it was relatively flat at the end of the day, it did have some nice moves. Uh, we could talk about the DXY as well. The SPY. This leads me over to a point that I wanted to bring up. I actually downloaded um, a chart today. So I got to go into my inbox. Um, let me see if I can open this on a different page here. Maybe if I download it uh, and then there it is. So this is what I wanted to look at. Now this is something that hasn't happened since I think it was 2017. I don't know if we can see this too much, but here it is. The last five trading days, basically the close has been within 0.2% of each other over the last five trading days. This is the first time that this, and I got this from Bespoke, so I'd have to go check it out, but I think it's the first time this happened since 2017. So a lot of uncertainty here today in the SPY, and guess what? You can add, this is the SPY the last six months. Look what, this is the last five trading days, all boom, 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 boom. And guess what? If you're gonna look at what's been happening today, look at the SPY on a daily, Another one, six straight days closing within the same percentage points of each other. There it is right now. You can see straight on the screen, zeros right now. So this is a lot of coiling up here now for the SPY, which means we're due for a move. And why not? We have big tech earnings coming in just the next couple of days. Tomorrow we get Tesla. Tomorrow we get Netflix after the close. We already went through a bunch of names that are coming into tomorrow. Morgan Stanley, Procter & Gamble. Not that that's going to affect the S&P 5. Well, they're a member of the S&P 500, but I don't expect Procter to be too shady tomorrow. It's more about Tesla and Netflix, which could send the S&P 500 back down to the downside. So what was weak today then? You know... Whenever I see SMH, I feel like this. Shaking my head, SMH. Is that a thing, guys? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks for that. What else does it stand for? No, that's it. Okay, good. I got it. These young guys over here, um, <laughs> Fabian and Ramin, I got to, you know, it's like my kids. Like today, my son tells me that that, okay, watch this movie, Five Nights at Freddy. Okay, so that's coming out. It's a little bit of a horror, but it's PG-13. My kid's 12. He wants to go see it. So he messaged me today. I could show you on my phone. I messaged. He's supposed to be in school. Uh, but he messaged me today. He's like, tickets now available for FNAF, FNAF. So I guess that's what it's called. And he goes, Dad, get the FNAF tickets, TTYL. Uh, so talk to you later. So I did not get them. I will get them tonight. He wants to know about uh, D-Box or IMAX and all that. So I thought it'd be kind of cute uh, to do that with him later on today. Um, okay, so that's a little bit of a recap. But uh, first of all, before we go to the next one, just quickly, SMH downside. We saw some negative news um, come from SMH today. And again, it was due to NVIDIA and other chip names traded lower due to the new export restrictions on chips into China. So that's that's going to affect NVIDIA today and AMD and all of that. So the SMH today, 1.18%. NVIDIA at its bottoms, wow, 425 today for NVIDIA as it continues to march lower, lower, lower. There it is right there, 
424, beautiful move back, but you could see Nvidia today down five points, yuck. If you're gonna start restricting chips into China, this is part of the stuff that I was talking about, man. I am nervous about investing in Alibaba, um, in, in, in Neo, in JD, in my guy Sharif's um, Lee Auto. I'm, Nervous about a few different names as well as we play camera roulette. But I like all those looks. Let's go over to this one right now. How fast are you? Ah, uh, oh, we missed it. But that's pretty good. Pretty good, Ramin. All right. Uh, anyways, SMH shaking my head to the downside today as well as UNG. But uh, that's what it is. All right. I did quickly want to talk a little bit about XLF because we did get some movement lately in the banks. XLF done nicely here, uh, closing the day, not near its highs, but trying to get back up, bouncing off that 33.50 level. And if you're gonna look at it daily, we've had again, the biggest report of them all came from Wells Fargo and from JP Morgan. Nice upside move, look at this. Nicely done, back to the 200 period. The reason why I wanna talk about XLF is because again, water time. You are at the 200. period moving average for XLF, and you are also at the 50. So shout out to 50 there as well. Bank of America uh, today, net income grew by over 10% um, to 7.8 billion, beating on EPS, 90 cents versus 81 consensus. BAC today rocking a little bit, up 2%. I really, really like that. 26% increase in global banking and global markets. That's kind of cool uh, to see that. So getting a little bit of exposure outside of US markets, Bank of America definitely performing well. The interesting thing that I found today, shout out to B Bespoke as well. Here we go. Uh, bespoke. So look at these historical earnings for Bank of America. When they beat, look at the last seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last eight reports green. The seven before that, all red. So BAC, when they report and they report well, you get those upside moves. So thanks to Bespoke for this. But this goes all the way back to 2020, guys. So all of this quarterly, nice moves up. They've had their last one, two, last eight quarters. So the last two years, all action to the upside, day after, day of, and day after their earnings. While back in 2020, you could see a nice little pullback in. So, hey, something to think about there for BAC, as this chart, pretty telling to me anyways, uh, there, I just wanted to bring that up to you uh, coming through. And here's another little graphic that I downloaded as well. You could see here's the last couple large banks. We talked about this beat uh, right here for, for Oh, you can't see. How do I move this over? Hold on one second. Yeah, I'll do what I want, Ramin. Uh, all right, zoom in on the image here she's telling me to do. There it is. Okay, but now it's even harder. All right, there it is. There, how's that, Ramin? That looks pretty good. Uh, so here's Wells Fargo. Um, nice beat there, 61%. I know it's going to be hard to see. It doesn't really matter for now. I just wanted to show you Wells Fargo with the net income beat, with a revenue beat as well. JP Morgan with the revenue beat, net income beat. The other banks, Goldman Sachs, downside today. Charles Schwab, downside. Citigroup, upside. So it's been a mixed bag for the bank so far. We'll see about Morgan Stanley coming through uh, tomorrow. So that's a little bit. So I do do some due diligence uh, heading into this show for you. Thank you to Bespoke and some random Twitter uh, sites that I did pull some of that off today. Goldman Sachs, kind of sucky there, reported 33% loss on Q3 profits, which you did see. But you know what? I actually didn't look at Goldman Sachs. Where did we come out today? Yeah, see? So down 1.65%. So again, revenue miss, profit miss, Goldman Sachs downside, which sucks. I own Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Wow, this is getting close, man. $300 coming into play. Oh, I just saw. What's up, Ian Respeto? Thank you so much for becoming a member, man. You mean a lot to us. You did a lot of super chats. Thank you so much to Ian Respeto today uh, for coming. Yeah, welcome, Ian, for sure. Uh, but yeah, the banks, again, you know, play the strength in the banks. So you're going to get WFC. Look at the move that they've had over the last couple of days. Boom, right back there to the 200. Don't believe me, man. Believe the chart. Here's the chart right here. Look at Wells Fargo go remain off this move 40 all the way to 42 let's keep the train going off earnings one two three in a row days to the upside nice move there all right what else we want to talk about oh yeah small caps all right trader talk time let's talk about let's do this do that damn thing uh right now the iwm look the 
the Russell 2000, right? Um, again, coming in to play one more time. The reason why I like IWM, and we talked about this yesterday, look at this bottom play right here, 170. We just hit that two days ago. We talked about this last week. Small cap's been getting hit. Why? I mean, let's just call it like it is. They're more indebted than these other big cap names. You can't just run rampant with these magnific Magnificent Seven. We know the cash on hand for these guys. They're actually making money right now. If, if Apple can afford to pay you four, four and a half percent on your money sitting there in the bank, what do you think they're collecting on their, what, how much, 300 billion in cash, whatever they're sitting on, Apple. But let's look. Micro caps and small caps have been getting hit because it's been too expensive to borrow money and grow your business. So whether or not they're getting hit or not, it doesn't matter. The market is hitting them for you. And I feel like if we're now going into Fed pivot, we need Jerome Powell to give a, a phone call one more time. Fed pivot means that we were going to get the possible interest rate move back down in. Will they cut this, this next time in November or will they cut in December? We'll wait to hear from Powell. Hello, Jerome. Oh, just missed it. We will hit, we'll, we'll wait to hear from him. No, don't hit it again. It's fine. I'm missing it on purpose, guys. All right. Um, we'll wait to see on November. And you know what? Without any further ado, CME, Fed rate to all. Let's go have a quick little look here as... Uh, there's this one search engine, it's called Google, it's pretty good. I just type it in and miraculously spits these things out. Get out of here. Uh, there it is right now. So 88% chance right now that we stay put uh, coming into the next Fed. Um, and then in December, I believe we're wishy-washy. So still 60% chance that we stay. Some people calling 38. This is all going to change on November 1st when we actually see what the Fed does. And then there's more data points. Remember, this is December 13th. So we still got two months to go uh, before this is in consideration. And then we've looked at January. Uh, that's still the same. March, it was May, was the next time for a cut. 8% um, chance coming in March. And then May was much, much bigger, I believe, to the other side. Yeah, so now you're starting to talk about 50 basis points. So the reason why we talk about this is because of the IWM. I think it's time to nibble uh, to buy some more. I'm talking about long term. And again, it's not financial advice. I'm not, um, you know, qualified to give this to you uh, as far as like, hey, you know, watch your, watch your P's and Q's. I just like this at a downside level. Look about getting into some of this. And why? Again, let's call up this graphic for you. We're not just doing this just because, remember. Okay, here it is. Let's, maybe I can zoom in just a little bit more. There we go, Ramin. There we go. Uh, okay, so this is the average stock distance percentage from its 52-week high. S&P 500. Now, this is micro cap. I'm talking about small cap, the IWM. But just to get an idea, there's going to be a little bit less dramatic on the IWM. But look at all of this. The worst one, healthcare. We know that healthcare, this is the micro cap. So again, I understand that. I like the IWM. Play with small caps instead. But 56% down on buy healthcare. Why? They got to borrow a lot of money, right? A lot of costs associated with that. Nice downside move. But look at the S&P 500. 18 versus 47. 21 versus 52. Like consumer discretionary, down but way, way more in these b small to micro cap names. I just think that if you're going to get regression back to the mean, you may get better return on your money and your earnings with you picking some smaller names. And don't be specific with the names. Pick the big one. Because if you're going to take an average 42, 42, 41, 30, 31, they're all down. Why bother to pick names in these individual areas? Probably about 40% down to the downside. The Russell micro cap names continue uh, to get hit. So I think that if you're going to look at that's micro cap, but why not just look at the IWM still continuing to get hit down here uh, for the year? Where are we? Uh, you're basically flat for the year on these names. You did have a nice move, but the pullback in has given you a good buying opportunity for sure. So that's just a little bit of trader talk uh, for you here today. Unfortunately, Brian Shannon could not make it through today. He'll be next week when we're going to have a big Q&A with Brian. He sends his regards to everybody. But that's a little bit of trader talk for me. Did a little bit of work on that. I just think that we can have a good opportunity to pick up some undervalued names and don't even worry about it. Just buy the ETF in the IWM. 
Okay, we are getting uh, on in time again right now, uh, obviously, as we uh, look to see what do we have next. Uh, the Russell Index, R-U-M-I-C, R-U-M-I-C. Does that make sense for the Russell microcap? Uh, e IWC, sorry. IWC right now. Uh, again, here is the iShares microcap. So you can see uh, very, very similar. You've actually broken below as well. People asking for the index right there. So IWC, the iShares. Uh, what, is the, what is the name for the Russell? I don't know uh, the, the Russell one. Does anybody in the chat know the Russell? Uh, yeah, or you can get RSP. Good, good call there by Max. This is, again, the S&P 500, but equal weighted. So I do want to give a big shout out to Max. We actually talked about this RSP with Michael Noss a while ago, um, talking about buying some strength into RSP again. That way you're not heavily weighted into the MAG-7, right? So that was something there. IWM, yeah, we talked about that, so okay. Um, all right, so good call there. Thanks, Jay Ross, Jay Haas, sorry. Shout out to Jay Haas uh, on that. Okay, trade review meta. Again, I don't have the sticky note in front of me, but what we did write down on the sticky note today was short meta, short meta, uh, silence for everybody. Short meta, Silencio. Uh, we, we had short meta 324. So the thing about it was, regardless of what happens to the market, we had a huge move down today. It's too bad. I mean, I could log into my Twitter right now real quickly. The only problem is I need to like, it, it sends me a code and I'm not logged in over here. So I'm going to do this real quick uh, to get this code so I can show you what we had written down. But the idea behind all of this one was, come on, let's go Twitter. Where's my login code? Not giving it, there it is right now. I don't want to tell it online because then everyone's going to get it real quick. Uh, all right, this is this. Uh, let's get this. But the idea behind this meta trade was just to talk about patience and how important it was to be as patient as you possibly could be. So I'm just going to scroll through right here just to show you the sticky note because, again, to me, I, I do this for a reason. There's meta 324 short sale. We also had Apple on there, Amazon 129 long. On that one, Amazon, and then the AMD short sell of 107. Not only that, we also have some explanations here on why we like that. Meta, big level, we'll be watching this for a bump and a fade, okay? I'm bearish today, so waiting and patience on pops. Like, the more that I read my own notes, I'm like, damn, man, this guy's good, but it, 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 it's, I got to be more patient because I don't like taking the L's early. Here's meta. That was a good one right off the jump. We shorted it off the 200. It definitely worked. Nice move to the downside again. 320s, downside out. Our best out, 317. So that obviously is a banger. Then we went short again off of some of these wicks to the high side, 321. Those ones printed. But the ones that we're really proud about, and again, did we get stopped at once? Yes, yes, we did. But look at this 324 short. Boom to the downside. Again, we like it so much. We have so many fills up here. Nice downside move. Look at that. Giving you 322.50. Let's go. That's another buck 50 on that move to the downside. Then we just waited. This is the patience that I need to have as a trader. I can see only 45 seconds left. We waited for it to come. It's got to be, yeah, just keep it on here, uh, Ramin, for a minute. Um, you got to wait. So we got to be patient. Wait for this. Wait for this. Wait for it. Came back in. Hit the short. Hit the short. Eventually got stopped out. Look, I'm cool getting stopped out. When we're short at 324, getting out at 70s, getting out at 50s, getting out at 25s, I'm cool with getting stopped out on the high side of that trade. Then reshort this bad boy, and this is where the money really came in as it started to print near the end of the day. The reshort there for Meta. The idea behind this trade is A, hit the like button, everybody, first of all. The second point about all of this is please be patient. If your levels don't hit early, it's fine not to have the trade, right? We should have done better on Amazon, but we did good on Meta. So that right there was kind of stock blitz, I guess, a little bit. All right, what do we have left right now? Thank you for joining me. This is actually, I've done pretty good here. Roll call and stock blitz. So here it is right now. We just hit the stock blitz. So I'm gonna hit the roll call. This is one of my favorite because it involves everybody here. Um, I'm gonna check out how many likes do we have on this stream. 
350, 50 more guys, 1,400 watching. All right, here it is right now. Shout out to you, Super SPAC man. Thank you so much uh, for the kind words there. Bang, for that call on Meta. That was a good one. If it's not on the sticky note, you don't want it. Good point for profit. I just got to learn that for myself. Um, all right, thank you so much. Ponzi Fonzi, Road Runners here. Jacob's here, Super SPAC man. We've already done it. Yo, Dan McIsaac, what's up, man? I know you're a real one as well. And real traders stay late. So that's what we're doing. Traders stay late, man. Uh, thank you so much. Natalia's always here. Me, 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 Natalia. You get a bang for that as well. You're always here. Hugh is here as well. What's up, Hugh? Y'all, you had me say your name last time. People can read it. Uh, Kurt, what's up, Kurt Hoffman? Chef Rico is here. Dees is here as well. So shout out to you, Dees. Patricia's here. Thank you so much, Patricia. It means a lot. Uh, Roadrunner's here. Apollo's here. Jessica Woodard's here. What's up, Jessica? Uh, thank you for staying late with me uh, as well. Rock Roadrunner. Roadrunner. Uh, you need an update on the black market with regards to what? Because I'm Italian, you need an update on the black market? Come on, uh, right now. But shout out to Manuel, shout out to everybody. Go Lions, fail on that one. But shout out to you as well, Sailor Moon. Go Pack, go. We'll get revenge on the Lions later on uh, this year as they got us the first time. We'll get you after. Where, where else would you go? Thank you so much, Chris, for joining me. Hey, look, real traders stay late. I made some mistakes today. Still a good day overall. You know, we got to be humble sometimes. It was, we eat pie on that Amazon short, but we make it back with that meta, plus everything else. We didn't even talk about our Google trades, our Intel trades today, which were absolutely fire. We had seven or eight names. I think we are about six and three or so today, so we'll look to improve on that tomorrow. But thank you so much for staying. I'm coming home. Don't know what's for dinner. I suggested fish and chips, something like that. We'll see. Um, congratulations to my daughter who ran uh, in the cities today. You're the best. Shout out to my my son as well. We're going to get those FNAF tickets tonight. Should be a good one. And I was, you know, it was a fun game. Um, we can do this every time at the end. Well, you know what I played? Uh, you know this game too. Um, Ramin Uno. So we played, we got a Harry Potter Uno card uh, set, and I played that with my kids last night. That was a lot of fun, so a shout out to that. Awesome. Shout out to you, Bears vs. Bulls as well. You are the best. We'll do, um, we're over time. We'll do roll call and fan funding tomorrow. So thank you so much to everybody. Thank you for staying late. 400, we got it. So thank you so much for that one. 400 likes to the show and the stream means a lot to me. Tomorrow is five bills. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean Katina. Thank you to Ramin for staying late as well. Real production, stay late. Real traders, stay late. I'm Sean Katina. Check you tomorrow on the mainstream. Ciao.